So first things first, we're gonna have to actually make our project. I'm gonna be using Unreal Engine 5.0.3, but you're more than welcome to try and follow along. Now, once you hit launch, it will eventually load and it'll bring you to a page like this. Now for our project, we are going to be going into games. We are going to use the third person as our template. We're gonna make sure we click C++ because that's what we're going to be using. And I do want to include starter content because I do plan on referencing it. Now I'm going to name this Flappy Bird Tutorial. And then let's hit create and wait. Now, once the project loads, you're gonna be on your main viewport area here. And it's very important that you have access to this content browser. If the content browser is not there for you, I recommend going into window, then going into load layout and do default editor layout. This breaks my screen a little bit because I have an ultra wide monitor, but once I restore things, you can see now that content drawer should be there in the bottom left. And if you don't want it to disappear every time you click away, like I do, you're gonna go into the top right of that little window and hit dock and layout. So the first thing we have to do is take this world and prepare it for flappy birding. The way we're gonna do that is by deleting everything that isn't lighting or otherwise important. Now, what's interesting is you actually can't just drag and click inside the viewport within Unreal. So we're going to be doing things the old fashioned way within this little outliner in the top right corner. So if we go and click the top thing in the folder and then shift click to the bottom, we can then delete everything and then delete the folder after to make things pretty. And I'm gonna rinse and repeat this step for all the other folders that I wanna get rid of. And then from there, we can delete all the stuff that wasn't put into a folder. And we can do that by just selecting the rest and hitting delete. You will notice once everything is deleted that the world data layers and the world partition minimap stick around. I don't know why they won't delete and it doesn't impact the final project if they're here. So now we're going to go and we're gonna create our background. Now you can take whatever creative liberties you want and find whatever background you want to have for our Flappy Bird game. But I being the creative and super original guy that I am found the default one that was in the game back when it was a new thing. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that PNG file into my folder and it's going to create this texture file. Now we don't want to deal with texture. You'll notice that if I drag and drop this texture into the world, all that's going to do is create a material version of the texture. That's not what we want. We want to actually put this in the world as this 2D object. Now, the way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to right click on our texture object and I'm going to select sprite actions to create a sprite. From here, it creates a sprite version of the texture, and this sprite version is going to be placeable within the world. Now, to do a little bit of cleanup before we do that, I'm going to build a new folder and I'm going to call it sprites, and I'm just going to drag my sprite into this folder so that I remember that's where it is when I'm looking for it later. Now, as we can see, I drag this into the world and bada bing, bada boom, there is a Flappy Bird background. Now, to make things consistent to work with, what we're going to do is we're going to put this back at origin. So if we have this selected and we can select this object either by clicking it in the viewport or by selecting it over in the outliner, it will then bring up a whole bunch of different variables that relate to this object. And what we're looking to do here is we're going to adjust the transform so that it goes back home. Now you'll notice this little arrow in the corner. This arrow basically means that it is not currently at the default value that it should or expects to be at. So what we can do to reset back to the default value is click on the arrow and that's going to send it back to 000 or our origin. Now to navigate in the viewport, my preferred method is to right click inside the viewport and then move around like I'm playing a third person game. So I can simply adjust the way I'm looking with my mouse and then I can use WAS and D to navigate to my objects. Now you can also use Q to move down and E to go up. So it's just like your favorite games. And that being said, we have now successfully added our background. Now we're going to go and give a camera some work to do. So the camera is going to dictate what the player can and can't see. And we're gonna start by adding a camera object so that we can set that up. In this top left-ish corner here, we're going to hit this little drop down so that we can add an object. Now, the way I find objects that I wanna find is I go to all classes and then I search for the thing I'm looking for, in this case, a camera. Now, in this case, we are choosing the camera actor, not the cinema camera actor. I don't know the difference, but I'm choosing this one. So now the moment we add our camera, we can see a few things. One, there's a camera. That's fantastic. Two, there's this little camera actor viewport thing that comes up in the bottom right of your viewport. This is what the camera can see. Now, our goal is going to be to set up our camera so that it is simply just seeing the background pixel that we have set up. So the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to have my camera selected and then I'm going to go and hit this little revert arrow so that we go back to our default value of origin. From there, I'm going to adjust these variables, be it location, rotation, and scale, 
so that I can have a proper picture. So referencing this little image in the bottom right, I'm now first going to adjust my rotation so that I'm looking at my background. So I'm going to go and I'm going to approach in here and I don't necessarily know which way I should turn, but we do have a rotate tool. If you hit the shortcut E, or if you click this little rotatey thing in the top right here, it's going to bring up this little rotator tool. And now it's a lot easier to see that I should be rotating my camera to look this way about 90 degrees so that I'm flat on. So now we're gonna go and we're going to pull back our camera so that it's just nicely looking at our background. And the way we can do this is by moving and moving is short key W. This brings up our little triangle here and it's also this tool if you want to translate over here. Now to translate, we are simply going to grab in the direction we want to translate and drag them back. And we're going to drag them back until it's simply a nice even amount of background being shown by our camera. Something like this will do just fine. And we can see that that's at about roughly location 690 with a 90 degree rotation. So now that we have our camera and our fixed background, we are now going to create the bounds of our world. Now, when you think of Flappy Bird, you're thinking of that bird and it has an upper and lower bound. We are going to account for these upper and lower bounds by using trigger boxes. So to add a trigger box into the world, we're going to go back into the top left and then we're going to go to all classes and we're going to search for trigger volume. And when we add that, it's going to add this blank nothingness into the world. So with this blank nothingness, we're going to once again adjust everything so that it properly encompasses the top or bottom of our world. So to do that, same as always, we are going to go and we're first going to reset everything back to origin. And then I'm going to explain how we're approaching this problem. So we are going to need to adjust our transform of this trigger volume so that it's going to properly hit everything that the bird is going to be a part of. Now, when we place our bird into the world, it's going to be looking about here. It's not going to be on the background. It's actually going to be slightly in front of the background and the camera is going to make it look like they are one and the same. So to account for this in our actual game, we are going to set our trigger volume to be more ahead of the background so that it's going to be able to interact with the bird when it interacts with it. So now from here, we are going to make our trigger volume the same size as the top of our world. And to do that, we're going to use the size, which is this tool here, or shortcut R for scale. And from there, I'm just going to make this super big. And once we get to about the size of the world, I'm then going to translate this with shortcut W all the way up to the top so that when and if our bird ever hits that top volume, we are going to send some sort of signal that we will set up later. Now from there, we're going to do the same thing and we need to set it up to touch the bottom of our world. Now, it could be fun to get you to do this all over again, but there is a shortcut where we can hold control and then hit D to duplicate. And then we have a second version of this object that we can then drag all the way to the bottom. And just like that, we now have everything properly set up for a trigger. Now, what is a little bit confusing is we now have trigger volume one and trigger volume two, and I, for one, am not going to remember which one's which, so I'm going to rename them using F2 so that I can call this the upper volume, and then I can call this one down here the lower volume. And then the final thing I'm going to do in order to make sure that I don't get confused is I'm going to create a folder called world stuff and I'm going to drag everything that encompasses the world into world stuff. So I've got camera actor, our background sprite, and then both of our trigger volumes. I'm then going to go and I'm going to just drag those into world stuff so that I can get them the heck out of my way and stop worrying about them. Now, the final thing we're going to do to set up our world is set up where the player is going to spawn. To do that, we are going to quickly add to our project a class called player start. When I click on that, it's going to put it into the world. Same as before, I'm going to reset this back to 000, and then I'm going to quickly just move it forward so that we are not interacting directly with the background. And then I'm going to move it back because uh, that's just how I like to play Flappy Bird. I like to have a little bit more leeway. Then you can see what I was talking about before where now we have our bird that is eventually going to spawn here that is now in line with both of the trigger volumes if I fall too low or go too high.